Gotcha. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Monster Underworld Iceborne video. This is the Game Economist, and today we're going to be talking about the 10 things you didn't know about the Longsword. This is my ongoing weapon series, where I share hidden mechanics about the different weapons, I talk about some of the advanced strategies you might find a speedrunner using, and just overall obscure stuff you might not have known about your weapon, your favorite weapon, or a weapon that maybe you don't use but you're interested in. So if you really like these kind of videos, let me know down in the comment section. I'm going to get all 14 weapons done and we're going to get them in a nice playlist, okay? Let's get started. To begin, I'm going to cover two bonus tips. They were so easy that I didn't feel like they truly belonged on the list. However, they're also pretty important, so I figured, you know, anyone who's new to the weapon really should know about this. Let's go ahead and cover it. Bonus tip number one, let's talk about leveling up your spirit gauge very quickly. So obviously the number one fastest way is to simply dodge through a monster's attack using the Foresight Slash. So that's the move where you can only use it at the end of one of your moves, right? Foresight Slash, it has an iframe. It actually has a really large iframe if you didn't know that. It has like almost triple the length of an iframe of a, of a regular roll. That's how good the iframe is on Foresight Slash. So it's really good. Uh, but basically, after you finished it, if you land it and you finish the follow-up, that levels up your spirit gauge. Everyone knows this. But how about the fastest way to get your spirit gauge if you're not using Foresight Slash? Well, this is probably going to be the overhead slash, followed by a thrust, followed by a fade slash. And then from the fade slash, you go into spirit blade combo. And because you went from foresight slash to spirit blade combo, there's kind of a shortcut. There's a name to it. I don't remember. You get the shortcut for the spirit blade combo, and then you just finish it much faster. Okay, so that's the most efficient way to get your spirit gauge to level up. Really important if you want to be good with the longsword, right? The second bonus tip. Don't forget, if you want to increase the delay time that you have in order to use the Foresight Slash, use your Thrust, right? So the fastest way to be able to access the Foresight Slash is to use a Thrust, and this leaves you in that delay stance where you can go into the Foresight Slash. Really important. Oh, and don't forget, you also have to have a little bit of Spear Gauge for Foresight Slash to work. That was one of the nerfs that they added to the Longsword, I believe. Correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. All right, and now we're beginning the list. Tip number one. When you deflect off of a monster, you might have noticed that you're not really doing that good of damage. What else is interesting for the longsword is you're also not really building up your spirit gauge. So this is really bad for the longsword. It's important that you hit a monster's soft spot or weak spot, whatever you want to call it, so that you're not deflecting. You've got all kinds of monsters that deflect too. You've got like Behemoth's Belly, Urgon's got a chin. Kieran, you know, when he's enraged, he's got his whole, like, body is basically going to have you deflect off of him. So there's a lot of different monsters that have hard spots. Lavasiath is another great example. And if you deflect off of them, you're really going to suffer from that, especially with the longsword. Other weapons will do less damage just like you, but you will do less damage and not build up your spirit gauge. The second thing you might not have known is that you can actually cancel out of Foresight Slash using the Special Sheath, right? That's the new thing we got with the Iceborne. You put your weapon away, you have EI Slash available, you have the EI Spirit Slash available. And why is this useful in this particular case? It's because when you use the Foresight Slash, the problem with it is it always consumes all of your Spirit Gauge. And let's say you actually used it at the wrong time, and so now you're just kind of left with no Spirit Gauge, uh, but you would like to build it up as fast as you can. Well, rather than going through the whole animation of the failed Foresight Slash, you can cancel that move as soon as possible with the Special Sheath, and then if you happen to land the EI Slash, of course we know that that attack causes your Spirit Gauge to start regenerating automatically. In other words, using the EI Slash is one of the best ways to recover from a failed Foresight Slash. On my screen, you can see when you use a Foresight Slash, there's always two parts to it. However, you can cancel the second part of it with that Special Sheath. See, you can't even roll out of the second part, so the fact that you can cancel it with the Special Sheath is kind of a nice thing to know. 
Number three on the list is going to be an examination of what you can actually accomplish with the new slinger pod mechanics when it comes to Iceborne Longsword, right? So one of the things that we received is the ability to do a slinger pod burst in the middle of the spirit blade. When can you use it? On the first three attacks of the spirit blade. You can even do it multiple times. So you can do spirit blade one, slinger pod burst, uh, spirit blade two, Slinger Pod Burst, Spirit Blade 3, Slinger Pod Burst, and then Roundhouse Slash. There's some really nice mechanics to this. One of the nicest things is if you're afraid of the monster moving away, and you've got something like, let's say, Piercing Pods. A lot of monsters drop Piercing Pods, right? You can actually fire the Piercing Pod to stop the monster from moving away, so that you definitely land your Roundhouse Slash. Or Round Slash, I'm sorry, Roundhouse. Roundhouse Kick! No, your Round Slash, right? Uh, the other thing you can do is you can use this mechanic to turn your character around. So let's say the monster somehow has moved behind you, and you're in the middle of your spirit blade combo and you want to swing behind you well you can fire the slinger burst behind you and then finish with your round slash and the last thing that i also find useful is if you think the monster is going to approach you he's currently too far away but you want to delay 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 you can use the slinger pod burst as a way to further delay using your round slash so all of those are really nice mechanics with the new slinger pod burst that we got for the longsword and iceborn additionally i was analyzing speedrunners and i noticed they would actually use a slinger pods to cause KOs. Particularly, I saw this with the slinger thorns, right? And then what they would do is they'd fire it into the monster's head during the spirit blade combo, and it would actually give them one KO. So this is something you might consider as well. It's really interesting. The fourth thing you might not have known about the longsword is going to be a tip that a lot of players have already figured out at this point in Iceborne. So we received the special sheath and we just talked about how it can cancel moves. Well, you have two moves that have really long recovery frames. The first one is going to be your round slash, right? The spirit round slash. That's at the end of your spirit blade combo. The other one is the helm splitter. You use the helm splitter, you jump in the air, you fall that back down. Your character kind of sits there for a minute. So in the past, you kind of had to roll out of these, wait for them to end. Well, now you can actually use the spirit sheath to end them faster. This allows you to basically ignore some of the recovery frames to go into the uh, special sheath, right? And this lets you use the EI slash. And what you see with the speedrunners is they almost all do this, like just strictly. All of them, when they round slash, they're going to use the special sheath. All of them, when they helm splitter, they're going to use the special sheath. There is an exception. I have seen some speedruns where the speedrunner was so good that they know they're not going to have time to use the EI slash and follow up with a helm splitter later. So they actually just sheet the weapon like normal and then they go into the helm splitter. That's the only exception that I've seen. So to recap, what I'm saying here is you could have a situation where you're using your round slash and normally you would go into the special sheath and then the EI slash because that's efficient damage wise. You're canceling your recovery frames on the round slash. However, if the monster is just then recovering, you can actually not use the EI slash, not use the special sheath, and then go straight for the helm splitter and just have enough time to land that helm splitter. See what I'm saying? The fifth thing you might not know, so this one is going to be for the newbies. I figure we're talking a lot about EI slash, we're talking a little bit about EI spirit slash. Let's go ahead and break them down and maybe share some thoughts on them. This is gonna help you guys understand it a little bit better. Some of you guys already know this stuff. So basically with the EI slash, what you don't know about the EI slash is not only does it reach you forward a lot, not only does it have a lot of a large hitbox, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If you happen to land the attack, your spirit gauge starts to automatically fill up. I mentioned that earlier. Here's a hidden mechanic a lot of players don't know about EI slash, and that's that EI slash works similar to the greatsword tackle. So when you use EI slash, there's a few frames where you actually have poise and you're able to tank through an oncoming attack. The, the attack doesn't flinch you, doesn't knock you back. You do take damage. I think it's reduced damage, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but you basically tank through it like a shoulder tackle on the greatsword. Now, I split the next one, Spirit Slash, off onto its own segment. So for number six, EI Spirit Slash is going to be much harder to use. 
So with this move, it does give you iframes and you're meant to use it kind of like the way you use Foresight Slash. So you're supposed to time it really well. And what you'll do is you'll dodge through the monster's attack rather than taking any damage. And then the actual EI Slash does a bunch of damage and apparently it does pretty good stun as well to the monster. And it leaves you open to using the Helm Splitter if you want to use the Helm Splitter. However, if you get the timing wrong on EI Spirit Slash, the problem is it consumes one whole level of your spirit gauge okay so it's very expensive to use if you miss if you land it correctly it doesn't consume anything but if you miss you're going to lose a level of your spirit gauge and that's a big deal now i was analyzing speedrunners there were two things i noticed there were some really freaking fancy speedruns where the speedrunner actually was using ei spirit slash multiple times correctly so he would just dodge through the monster's move and deal massive damage and he would easily get like a flinch on the monster because of it The other thing I noticed, I saw a few speedruns where they they did not try to use it to iframe through anything. They weren't they definitely weren't trying to iframe. I knew this because the monster wasn't even attacking them, and they used the EI Spirit Slash anyways. And I think the reason they did this is because they knew it was going to give them a flinch. Because the moment they used it, the monster flinched or it went into the drool status. So that was really, really interesting. Somebody actually using EI Spirit Slash aggressively knowing that he's going to be able to basically get back here Spirit Gauge 3 because the monster's flinched anyways. On the other hand, that tip's not going to be crazy useful for casual play because you would kind of have to have all the flinch values memorized for whatever part of the monster's body you're attacking. Number 7 on the list is going to be regarding Helm Splitter. So this is going to be a tip that applies to the Greatsword as well. Basically, this is a trick a lot of skilled players are using. When a monster has been incapacitated, maybe they've been flinched, maybe they've been knocked down, especially if they've been knocked down, right? What'll happen is you could rush to use your Helm Splitter right away. And some people I did notice do this. However, other speedrunners would do another thing where the monster would be down. They would be wailing on the monster's head, but not using Helm Splitter yet. And then right near the point when the monster is about to start standing up, that's when they activate the Helm Splitter, so that when the monster is fully recovered, the Helm Splitter lands for high damage and just knocks the monster over all over again. If it doesn't knock them down, it'll send them into the drooling status or it will flinch them. Right, so this is a trick that the Greatsword players use with their True Charge Slash. Basically, you're waiting for the monster to be done recovering so that your next really powerful hit also contributes to the next flinch. You can do this with Helm Splitter. So you have two different approaches now. You can just spam the Helm Splitter as soon as possible in order to build up your Spirit Gauge again. Or if you're so super OP anime weeaboo, you can wait for the monster to just recover, then land the Helm Splitter and basically cause uh, contribute again to the next flinch. The eighth thing on the list is going to be regarding softening a monster's hide. So when you're using the longsword, the longsword is considered a light weapon. When it comes to a light weapon, you're not going to get to soften the monster's hide after one clutch claw weapon attack. So what a lot of speedrunners were doing, and I think this is important to think about doing if you're going to be playing solo, what a lot of speedrunners were doing is they would use three claw attacks on the part they want to soften, typically the head. And so it would rotate the monster three times, and then they would throw the monster into the wall, and when the monster was on the ground, then they would grab onto the monster and use a weapon attack to finish softening the head. Okay, so this a lot of players were doing this, by the way. Uh, not just a few. Most of the longsword speedrunners would grab onto the monster, claw them three times, throw them into the wall, and then soften up that body part uh, after the monster's been knocked down. One thing I do want to mention, though, is you probably don't want to use this trick with teammates. With teammates, you want to go for the double flinch shot, double knockdown, right? So you knock him down once with the flinch shot, and then as soon as he stands up, you flinch shot him again. That's because you got teammates who will help you soften the monster's hide anyways. You all really benefit from getting multiple knockdowns because of the effects of... Uh, it's like a multiplicative effect, right? You got all four people gathered around, that's damage times four. So getting two knockdowns, I think, is a bigger priority in that case. The ninth thing you might not have known about the longsword is that it actually does a pretty good job with the impact mantle. You wouldn't think about using the impact mantle on the longsword, but here's a few things that we know about it. First of all, when you're using your weapon attack after clutch clawing, the weapon attack is going to be a multi-hit attack, right? So if you just grab the monster by the head 
and then you use your weapon attack with from the clutch claw, you're going to get a multi-hit attack there. The second thing we know is when you're using the helm splitter, the helm splitter is a multi-hit attack as well. So if a monster actually gets knocked down, like let's say he gets tripped or it's just enough damage or boulder, whatever, he gets knocked down and then you're going to use helm splitter on him. Well, if you put your uh, impact mantle on before the helm splitter comes out, you're going to deal a lot of damage, but also a lot of KO damage. And then if that doesn't cause a knockdown from KO, what you can do is then just claw onto him and use a few, maybe one. Maybe, it depends on if you're playing by yourself or playing multiplayer, obviously, because he's going to have a higher uh, threshold for KO in multiplayer. But yeah, so you can grab onto his head and then start softening the head up, and this is going to cause even more KO damage. So I thought that was really interesting. I noticed that some skilled players were using Impact Mantle with their longsword. I was like, really? I, I wouldn't think of that. But yeah, so Impact Mantle probably has a lot of uh, new uses in Iceborne because of those multi-hit attacks. Like Charge Blade, I know, does it. The Greatsword does it now. So it's, it's, it's actually very interesting to explore that idea. All right, and you've made it to the end. Hello, everyone who made it to the end. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and share two builds with you. One build is going to be an end game damage build. The second build is going to be an end game defensive build that I have been tinkering around with for a while, about two weeks of just playing with all the defensive skills cumulated into this. Believe it or not, heroics and defense boost seven on the same build, raise your defense, divine blessing, and super recovery and recovery speed all together is pretty ridiculously powerful so all these skills together make it so that it's pretty hard to die now of course you would only use a defensive build for casual play if you wanted to play hardcore you would go with the attack build however some of you might actually enjoy defensive builds that's why i recommend you give it a try give me some feedback tell me what you think of it and then finally maybe in the future there will actually be a difficult enough monster where a build like this is useful who knows you never know maybe we will get something if anything, it gives you something new to try. You know, the honest truth is that I kind of get tired of doing a lot of damage. You wouldn't think that's a possible, but yeah, I kind of get tired of using the exact same four skills over and over and over again and being like, oh, I'm doing five more damage. I actually get tired of that because I've played the game enough where I understand the damage builds pretty well and uh, it's not as exciting as it used to be. So having like some crazy defense and just not trying very hard is also kind of interesting in its own way. All right. That's going to be the end of the video. Let me know what you thought of it. If you want to help me in the video performance, don't forget to leave a comment or leave a like on the video. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.